Have you heard about Global Poker? Global Poker is the fastest growing card room in the US today, and it's available online at globalpoker.com. Global Poker is a social poker site that offers safe and secure cash out options by using their unique and patented sweepstakes model. Players can compete in big guaranteed tournaments, jackpot sit and goes, or cash games featuring Hold'em, Omaha, and even Crazy Pineapple. Don't wait. Check out Global Poker today. Poker Stories is an audio series that features casual interviews with some of the game's best players and personalities. Each episode highlights a well-known figure in the poker world and dives deep into their favorite tales both on and off the felt. Hello and welcome to Poker Stories, a podcast brought to you by Card Player, the Poker Authority, and hosted by me, Julio Rodriguez. This is episode number 71, and this time we are getting a closer look at Portugal's all-time money list leader, both live and online, in João Vieira. Now, João is only 29, so he pretty much completely missed the poker boom. But that hasn't stopped him from racking up more than 3.4 million in live tournament earnings and becoming one of the top five winners all time online with more than 13 million in caches. This summer, the Winamax Team Pro won his first World Series of Poker bracelet, topping the tough $5,000 six max event and beating Joe Cotta heads up for $758,000. But poker isn't the first game that Joao went pro in. He actually spent much of his teen years and early 20s as a professional basketball player. Although he was burnt out by the sport by the time he transitioned to poker, he was a standout player as a junior, competing on the national team and even recording two 50-point games. In fact, Joao credits basketball, along with his family, for the work ethic he developed that allowed him to quickly reach the highest stakes in poker. Anyway, that's enough intro. Here is my conversation with Joao Vieira, which we recorded last month with just a few days left in the WSOP. I'm here with Joao. How you doing? How you doing, Julian? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Getting a lesson in your pronunciation before we start. Um, It's just just common. It's common. common. I know. It's very hard because we have a a character over the A Mm -hmm. that only we have. So my brain wants to like put some weird emphasis on the. The syllable there. <laughs> uh, but uh, long summer, but a great one, huh? So far, it's been great, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so far, <laughs> what do you mean? It's almost over, right? There's, there's still more tournaments. I know. There's still some more tournaments. Uh, the, how long have you been here? And uh, I started, I, I arrived the, the first day. Mm-hmm. Well, the day before the, the start for the 10K Super Turbo, and I'm leaving the day after. Yeah. Not a single day more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I've been here for a And how many time. days off have you had during that stretch? Yeah, I'm not very good at days off. Yeah. I've had here, I believe, two or three, maybe three. Yeah, yeah. Now, the nice. So, uh, what what makes you take a day off then? Just the the lack of events you want to plan the schedule, or you were burnt out? No, I usually plan them. Mm-hmm. So whenever there's a really uh, weak day on the schedule, I'll probably just use it for a for a day off. Yeah. Or those days, uh, those one A's, one B's of the main. I usually take them as well, so like three days in a four-day span. Treat was, yourself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just just to be ready, just in case you make a ten-day run full of adrenaline and anxiety mm-hmm. and all this 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 emotional draining that it's gonna come from the one of the deep runs in the main. So I, I'd like to take a day off before, yeah. just in case, you know. And what do you do to relax in Vegas when you're not playing cards? You play pickup games or no, sightsee? My, no, <laughs> I haven't haven't uh, played any basketball actually here in the city and for four mm-hmm. years, which is. Uh, quite unusual, but I I mostly try to to be as boring as possible and just rest. <laughs> Go to dinner, like yeah. I went to UFC for example. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, must mostly relax. You do some MMA yourself, right? No, I've done I've done some 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 uh, Muay Thai for a year and a half. Mm-hmm. A little bit of Krav Maga, tried some Jiu Jitsu, but haven't done any martial arts for two years. I would say right, well, I've, I've get... done just a little bit. Yeah. Let's get into uh, the background of the sports background, specifically a little bit later. But uh, Portugal, tell me about growing up there. It was, it was amazing. I grew up in, a, in an island called Madeira. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a beautiful island in the, in the Atlantic. It's one of the bigger cities in Portugal, right? Yeah, 
Yeah, even though it's a small city, but it's the yeah, third biggest city, I would say. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's uh, it's off the coast of Morocco, actually. So it's close to the Ecuador. It's quite warm. It's a tropical island. And growing up there, it's amazing. It's peaceful. Uh, it's beautiful. People are warm. It's just as safe as it can be. So it was, it was a really good place to, to, to grow up. It's an amazing island, yeah. And what about your family? What were they getting into? Uh... We're just hardworking, hard work, work, hardworking class. So that's pretty much what what uh, what we did as a, as a growing up. So we always always struggle, especially my my uncles and aunts, but us as well. So it was not not really much going on besides hard work, mm-hmm. and that that's something one of the things that actually that actually ingrained in me. My dad uh, worked from 17 years old to 55 in an hotel, 50 something. It was 35. 37 years, something like that. Damn. He didn't miss a single day of work. Wow. Not even for a disease. Yeah. Yeah. I, I saw him drag his ass <laughs> to the job so many times, but it, yeah. So that, that's the kind of mentality. That leaves a lim- an imprint on you as a kid. It you does. Know? It does. Yeah. It does. And it makes you makes you want to work extra hard, you know. To, Here we are talking about off days at the World Series of Poker. Where you, play, <laughs> you get to play cards for a living. It's a far cry it's, from a hotel, it's, right? It's easy. It's easy. <laughs> my my grand, grandfather used to work from sun up to sundown. And mm-hmm. that's the kind of, of, of uh, farming. And, and then he went to build some houses. So that, that's that's the background. That's so... Yeah, well, don't you dress? I mean, I'm playing cards. I'm actually having fun. So for me, it's easier. <laughs> but when I get home, I'm going to have a full month of, well, I can't just say days off, but it's going to be an yeah. easy month. Yeah. There you go. Uh, all right, so what was the the focus for you early on? What what did you want to do? Uh, it was basketball. Yeah, so you knew early on. You were right like, away, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I started at 7. My first practice was at 7. Um, they have uh, the gym where I, I used to play. It's It's in the... In the barrio, as we say, it's in the same place as, as I grew up. And the first practice was uh, it was Wednesdays and Saturdays for the little kids. I went for <laughs> Wednesday and on, after Saturdays was second practice. I looked at my mom and said, "I want to be a basketball player." Uh, That's it, right? Yeah, Two I just love the game huh? so much, and I was playing soccer the whole time. Nobody mm-hmm. was playing basketball. So growing up, it was pretty much the thing. It was just uh, fully well, fully focused on basketball. Basketball is exploding in popularity. I guess the last decade and a half or so in like Spain, Portugal, like Europe in general. What was it like back then? I mean, was everyone just soccer obsessed? Yeah, it's, it still is. It yeah. still is to the day. Uh, people probably can't name the best Portuguese basketball player. <laughs> they just they just can't. So it was it was I was running running on the side track. Not, not a lot of people were doing <laughs> what what we were doing, yeah. And how good were you? This is where you get to brag a little bit. I was I was quite good. Yeah, uh, yeah, I was a pro at 15. I was a huge. Uh, um, so what does that mean? So like, you just don't go to school? Like no, no, no. Uh, you get a you get invited for the for professional basketball t- basketball team. I start practicing with him. Uh, I still it was my last two and a half years of high school, so I was still going through high school in the morning, and then doing double practices. I would practice with the professional team, and then I would practice with the youth team. Sometimes I was just going three practices. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so that was I didn't quit school right away just have a professional contract that was at 17 uh and yeah and so from college on from the college years on from 17 years old years old and on i was still in college technically but i, I can't miss a practice for college so i would yeah. go to college whenever it wasn't your athlete first student second uh, yeah yeah i was just gonna ask because you know you played for how many years basketball yeah 20 something but i mean professionally um uh, Six fully professional and two in- integrated on the professional team, so it's kind of eight. Yeah, I mean 15 that's to twenty three. Yeah, because I was about to get to the fact that you're only twenty nine years old. Yeah. I mean, you've done a lot in twenty nine <laughs> years. I mean, at, at some point along the way, you had to learn poker and become one of the best online players ever, uh, which we'll get to. But yeah, it seems like uh, there there are not enough hours in a day. I'm I'm a late starter in poker. Mm-hmm. Well, it yeah, looks like I've been around for a long time, but I have not. It's this like is my fourth I think series. Your first, uh, yeah, your first trip here was 16, right? Yeah, this is my fourth series. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I got, I started playing. We'll get to that as, uh, in more detail. But I start playing uh, poker, and a year and a half, two years later, I was playing the highest stakes online, uh, yeah. MTT. So it was just a, a fast, ri- fast, a fast rising. But I'm, I'm a late starter. Well, let's talk about basketball a little bit. Uh, so how did professional basketball work for you? What league was this? And like per- the Portuguese league, mm-hmm. first division. Our team usually is in fourth, fifth place, kind of um, 
competing for the fourth or fifth, fourth or fifth place. We always make the playoffs in the last ten years. I don't think we ever missed it. Mm-hmm. So that that it's a solid team, but not really fighting for the championship. But what did the league look like? Were you traveling yeah, yeah. by bus? Were you like no, no, no? It's an island, so we have to <laughs> we have to get the plane. So it was every other every other weekend you, we go to, right. to to the mainland, mm-hmm. to Lisbon or Porto, and we would play, and then we have our home games. Uh, the league works like uh, the soccer leagues would work. Uh, well, like every other professional league but NBA pretty much <laughs> which you play every week. Are you talking about relegation? I'm talking about scheduling. Oh, okay. I, 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 how do you every... say like teams get dropped off like they oh, do in no, soccer? No, 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 no. No. Okay. As well, as well, as well, the same. Oh, okay. Actually, actually that's the same, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we, we play every other uh, 15 day, uh, to every other week. Mm-hmm. No, I'm sorry, every week and every other week you have to travel so it's like uh, four or five five games per, per month. Yeah. Um, 12, 12 teams rotation. You play one game home one game away and then you go playoffs and, and national cup which is a different concept that we have and uh what what was your position and what point guard i'm 5'11 well that's, I'll, I'll, that's I'll, all i can do <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what the height situation is, is in portugal i was gonna get say yeah. point guard but i didn't want to be no a, no no due to assuming we're smaller but still and yeah. i was a small point guard a very small point guard. but what were you ball handler sharpshooter what was ball a little handler, bit of everything very fast yeah smart mm-hmm. hard on defense that kind of good thing. court vision yeah yeah, he used my, my. I had to use my brains. Willing to take a charge from a bigger player. Using to, I, I thought I, when I was when I was playing basketball, I thought I was seven feet and I wanted to fight everyone. Yeah, uh, yeah, I was a different person than me. <laughs> well, uh, who uh, were your guys uh, growing up? Uh, John Stockton has always mm-hmm. been my my um, my main motivation. Uh, it's a role model because he was it was a uh, one of the young guys, one of the the smaller guys. So I always look up for the smaller guys. Iverson, obviously. Yeah, you Cause like I, the small I, guys. I, yeah, I played a lot of basketball on the streets too. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Iverson obviously mm-hmm. was an inspiration. It was more about my my time, but mainly the the, the smaller guys actually just John, John Stockton, Did you have Steve a team? Nash. Uh, I never hit, really had a team. That, that's yeah. something that that's odd because I just followed whoever had the most beautiful basketball, like structure, mm-hmm. like San Antonio Spurs kind of like, mm-hmm. and whoever was who had the the, the 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 coolest point guard. Yeah, you're the flashy player, and then the team team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, uh, yeah, yeah, those kind of things. Yeah, I, I like beautiful basketball because I was watching European basketball for the most mm-hmm. part. It's very structure, very pick and roll, and the, 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 the tactical. So whoever was playing r- run and gun, uh, I just didn't like it. <laughs> I was trying to pull up your stats just to get a s- sense of uh, what player you were. Uh, but your name is also shared by so many other athletes. <laughs> <laughs> João means John. Yeah. So it's there's it's, like a famous bull rider with your name. Is it? Yeah. And then there's a uh, uh, what was the other one? Um, soccer player. So there's plenty of soccer players. Uh, and then there was an Olympic runner, I believe. Yeah. Too. For March. Yeah. <laughs> it's a guy. It's got some medals actually. Yeah. He did a few Olympics. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't. I didn't. I didn't get my feet wet that often on the pros. My junior career is far more, far better. Yeah. Yeah. You got the national championship. I got some 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 calls for the national youth team and that mm-hmm. kind of thing. It was much better as a young kid. And uh, uh, then as then as a pro, a pro, I never really got any game winners. Any you know? Yeah, I got I got some, any some stuff. games you could tell me about. Yeah, I got some some two fifty point games. Uh, two fifty point games as, as a younger, as a <laughs> under eighteen, under twenty, that kind of thing. Uh, triple doubles too, which is yeah. for my size, I'm very happy. Yeah. Uh, Jesus. As a uh, under four, twenty four. You got, got the a, hard way, right? It was rebounds, blocks. I got <laughs> <laughs> I got a quadruple double when I was under sixteen. With steals, Damn. yeah, with steals, yeah. But it was a game that we probably blew them by fifty or something. So that's not really something to brag about. So you were a volume shooter, huh? Uh, yes, yeah. Well, <laughs> as a young kid, I wouldn't pass the ball with a with a pole porter. Uh, you have to, you need, you need, and then as and I got to the pros, I couldn't. I was not shooting a single ball. I was playing Raja Rondo kind of style. It, it's just mm-hmm. it's far different because I started too young as well. I think that was one of the things that made me not not go further in basketball. I started too young, and when I was about to have my 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 first years with significant minutes like 20 21 i'd already been there for five or six years i was yeah, burnt I yeah. was burnt i started too young i think yeah I well you mentioned you don't play here in town obviously uh nah, with any place. but do you play pickup games at all anymore or? yeah i just few, i still played a uh, our b team which is a uh, play second division there uh it's from the youth the guys who don't get that much minutes and the and the pros and some young kids who will like 16 and 17 year olds yeah well mostly at 20s 
the guys that that finish uh, high school but still are not good enough to 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 play on a pro they play on that team i still practice with that team once in a while and i two years ago and three years ago i still played a, a few games mm -hmm. coach is my friend uh, is my my uh, high school coach is my yeah when i was younger he was was my coach i know most of the team pretty mm -hmm. much so i still show up one, once in a while help them with the practice you know you know that's got to be a cool feeling, though, when you show up to a game and no one knows who you are and you just ball out and they're like... Yeah, yeah I'm just kind of <laughs> helping the, the, the kids for the most part because yeah. I'm about to be 30. There's some 20-year-olds, <laughs> some 18-year-olds who are actually quite good and I think I got some experience that I could, mm -hmm. you know, or, or just maybe, make it just, maybe just make their, their life a bit harder. Uh, and so I just... I just I just provide some, some, some tougher competition on practice. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much what I do, but just for fun. <laughs> uh... You just got engaged. Congratulations! I did. Uh, thank you. She That's kind of. She made a really bad call. She made a really <laughs> bad call. I gotta I gotta take advantage because she's young. She makes bad decisions. She's in the she's in the room. She's so far been <laughs> quiet because you haven't lied yet. Apparently, so uh, that's good. Uh, but congrats on that. Thank so you, you have a lot going on in, in your world right that's, now. That's true. That's true. It's been an amazing, amazing few months. Yeah. Uh, let's talk a bit a little bit about your, how you got into poker. Was that what pulled you out of basketball, or were you just like done with basketball? I was about to, to be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I was just getting frustrated, and it was just too many years as a pro, not enough playing minutes. Uh, so I wasn't really realizing my my uh, my potential. Well, the potential that was was that I had of us when I was younger. I was quite good, really, really good when I was younger, and then at the pros, I never really, you know, got to uh, realize my potential. So I was was kind of on my way out for the most part. Uh, were you sad but, about it, or were you ready? Yeah, to Yeah, I was on? just not having fun, mm -hmm. and then that was I, it. Was just time to go. I knew that. I, okay, of course, like maybe my only dream that was still alive from my 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 youth goals was to to make the the the, the national team as a as a senior national team, not the youngest one, but this, the the senior. That was the only one that the only thing that actually I, that made me kept playing for the last one or one or two years. And I knew if I kept going when I. About this age, I would have a shot if mm -hmm. I just kept improving. Uh, but that was it. That was pretty much it. So uh, when poker came around, um, well, how did poker come around? Was that like a team bus situation? Uh, kind no of bus, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was. It was. Yeah. yeah, I had a teammate from the younger years who used to play, and I started playing with him. And then my my American teammates and some of my other Portuguese teammates used to play uh, online during the because we have to we had to fl fly. We had to fly to other city to to play since we're from an island, and they were playing on their on the at night. I started seeing the game and I started trying as well. That's how actually it started. But when I left basketball, it was just because of, of studies and I was just, just so it wasn't because like you had this huge online bankroll that you no no no, no. <laughs> I, it helped me because I I was already a semi pro as a, as a poker player. I could mm -hmm. already uh, sustain myself. That was important because you know there was not a lot of money going around. So I I knew I could I could just pay my own bills. Pay for college, the rest of, of college. Mm -hmm. So I had good enough bankroll to 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 for day to day stuff, but I wasn't I wasn't really making like one k a month maybe, which is in Portugal it's fine. And um, so it, your teammates introduce you to the game. Yeah. You become in love with it. Are you obsessed and reading everything you can find and jumping online? How are you getting better at? I got it? I got injured, mm -hmm. but the the last season and a half I was pretty much injured the whole time. Uh, so I was spending a lot of time, just you know, a lot of dead time. And college was not something that I was very into, <laughs> even though I was still, <laughs> I still in there. I was not, I was not the greatest student you you can find. So well, what I was, were you studying? Uh, business. Mm -hmm. Just something generic that uh, maybe one day you'll use. Yeah, uh, maybe, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> and I started playing. I started playing uh, some cards and uh, sit and goes. I found some some uh, close friends that I that I discovered at the time were already pros. Mm -hmm. I started hanging out with them. There was this, this uh, they had this training website. What was it? It was the, the website that later became uh, Pocket Fives Coaching. Oh. Um, I forgot the name. Uh, Accessinato was in there. I think Gags was in there. I cannot remember the name of that site. <laughs> uh, anyway, so they gave me that subscription. Yeah. And that was it. That's the thing that triggered everything. I probably watched, I don't know, in a month, like 60, 70 videos. Yeah, I was injured. I was doing nothing. I was playing sit and goes, and then all of a sudden, no, I was making things money. clicked right away. Yeah, yeah. I went from playing 
10 to 20 dollars setting goes to playing 300 in about two or three months wow nobody was doing shit at the time. Well, yeah sorry my, my no friends. it's okay uh nobody was nothing was structured nothing was professional everything was very amateur like mm-hmm. so and I, I came from a background of 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 hard you know professionalism you work twice a day you 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 lift weight you nutrition this and that and then i got to a point where everybody was playing once a week whenever they felt like if they tilt they were just randomly shoved they were drunk they were high mm-hmm. it was easy yeah at the time it was easy if you just put some hours you would gain so much ground so much fast yeah so it, that that's how we went through the first first few years of my career i had no idea how other people worked i just these my friends were the only guys i knew that played poker and this happened until I play high stakes MTT. So in my mind, that's well, how in, you approach it. That's how you approach it. In basketball, yeah. if you want to be good, you have to work two, three hours in practice, then three hours extra just shooting and making drills and being so professional. I thought, well, for sure, these guys in poker are doing the same thing. It, it's almost a blessing that you missed the poker boom because it was, it was amazing. You we, you might have gotten some bad habits. You I, know? Did. I yeah. did. I would have probably, and I would not understand how. In my mind, I just. I just I put everybody on the pedestal. These guys must be the hardest working guys I've ever knew because because mm-hmm. if they're the best in the world, then I know what it takes to be the best in the uh, try to be the best in the country in basketball. Yeah, a little country like a, a country that has no relevance in the in the basketball community worldwide. So these guys must work. You know, they must play five days a week. They might, they might study twenty hours a week. No, they were studying twenty hours a year. Yeah. So I went through that. Well, I gotta study study twenty five to catch up because I have some some I have some years behind me. I haven't I didn't start when they did. So I was just well, and it's not like you had a blueprint either from other Portuguese poker players because there really wasn't. There was some, I but mean, I didn't uh, really know. Barbosa knew them. was Barbosa, yeah. was here, kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you yes. know, for the most part, there wasn't a no, Portuguese wasn't. bracelet winner until a few years ago. No, no. Now there's four, three, three. Well, well, Jonathan. Do yeah. you count? Do you Jonathan. count John Aguiar? <laughs> People don't. Uh, well, well, I guess. Yeah. He still wears the, the Portuguese national he, team. He uh, represents from his uh, his Boston home. Probably, but people don't in Portugal. They, we don't. We don't. Yeah, and then you have. Uh, let's see who else is Francisco? on the list. Francisco de Costa Santos, and then uh, Diogo Viega. Vega. 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 That one's just Vega? Vega, Vega. Vega, okay. <laughs> yeah, I got that. Well, but yeah, so you didn't have, like, people who had been here and done it, like a, like a real blueprint for that. No. So you're basically, yeah, just applying I your basketball. I paved the way, yeah. A little bit, I think I paved the way. Mm-hmm. Um, still do. Um, now it's easier when you have, well, what, what, you have this podcast and you have all these interviews and, and people that open themselves up to their work ethic, to what mm-hmm. they do. Da, da, da. So you kind of just follow the path and there's upswing and there's run it once and then there's there's everything you know well it's funny you mentioned uh work ethic because i saw a tweet of yours where you're basically questioning how these other pros can basically phone it in even on like you're seeing it on televised broadcasts and stuff like that i mean you're you're about to enter a tournament here uh at the series to close out the summer you have what you said two big bets left Mm -hmm. basically I mean, I'm sure those are going to be the hardest two bets anyone's are going to take off of you, right? Yeah, it's 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 a question of habits. If you just mm-hmm. create the habit of just giving your absolute best, that's all what you do, and that and that's something you need to 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 build. If you you can't just build the habit, it's like shooting. When you shoot a you're shooting basketballs, so you're practicing your shooting. If you shoot with a bad form, you're creating a really bad habit. And when you're tired, you're going to go there. When you're fatigued, you're going to go there. When you're unfocused, you're going to go to that bad habit and you're going to break and break mm-hmm. and break and airball, whatever it is. So you always, if you don't want to shoot correctly, don't shoot. And that's something that I do in poker. If, I, if, not, if, not, if, not, if I'm not going to give my absolute best, I'm not going. Mm-hmm. And, and then I have the other ab- that, habit that says if I was working in a bank or whatever it was, 9 to 5, it's, you can't just miss the day because you don't feel like it. So I just I just make a schedule. I f- I do my schedule as uh, like if, if I had a boss, mm-hmm. and I had to do the schedule. And then when I I'm at the job, I do my best. Do you think that's why you prefer tournaments over cash games? I think so. Because somebody so. else makes a schedule. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there's no uh, yeah. There's no finish. There's no. I like I'm 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 very competitive. So I like. This guy will be first. This guy will be second. This guy will be third. There'll, mm-hmm. there'll be something to hold on. I just yeah. You don't get that in a cash game. Nah, just kind of play without. You know, I just play cash games ma- mainly to just just practice my mixed game. That's the only. Mm-hmm. I don't even play. 
even a juicy game, I don't feel like going in there. It's not yeah. something that doesn't drive me. The money doesn't not, does not drive me actually as, as much as the competition would does. Looks like your first big score was December 2014. Uh, the you know 10k at EPT Prague. You made the final table there. Uh, first big live score, I should yeah. say. Um, I think how the Bahamas. Yeah, genuine in the Bahamas, PCA high roller, yeah. 25K, eighth place. Yeah. Uh, so what was the, the decision like to turn pro, uh, your division between online and live hours, that kind of stuff? Uh, I turned pro, I started. I quit basketball. I went part-time poker, part-time college. Tried college for half a year, and one day I was like, this is just nonsense. This is not, I don't want to do this. If even if I finish this degree, I don't want to work on something that's, uh, this is just wasting my time. Just yeah. going to follow my dreams and drop it. Drop it right there. Left the classroom, never looked back. So I had a solid bankroll at the time. Uh, I was already playing uh, uh, tournaments for a living. Uh, and, and that was pretty much it. There was not really much much going on. I just tried to be the, the best I could be. My goal was always to be the, 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 the best in the world. And that's what I'm aiming for. There's no finish line for me. I don't see like... I don't set goals and, and, and just stop. I don't I don't win this amount of money. My it's the best I can be. I want to, to find out who's the man that can beat me. Mm-hmm. So until uh, well, who, who's now is Shidwick? Okay, let's go hard. Let's go hard on Shidwick. Let's see if you can beat Shidwick. Yeah. If one day I'm gonna find one. Of course you're gonna find one guy that said I cannot beat this guy. I've mm-hmm. done everything that I could, and this guy outworks me, outthinks me, outsmarts me, whatever it is. Congrats, congrats, you won. But until that point, I'm gonna push myself to the limit, and that's the only way you. I, that's that's how I approach life. That's how you, we're not gonna be there here forever. So you might just wanna might, might as well just waste not waste. Might as well just invest your time on on a on a on a productive way. And I wanna find where my limits are. Well, let's talk about your online poker approach. You obviously grind very hard online. Mm-hmm. Um, are you still number three in the world? I don't all know. time. I don't know. Yeah, because we it's because of pocket fives. You all. The f- number one just came out of the shadows. Exactly. So we don't really. It was know. Mormon, and yeah, then he got passed Pelabaxi. by uh, Peter Trapley. Um, yeah. And uh, you're in the three range. <laughs> Probably in the fifth range because okay. I played a lot of live this this year. That's right. I, right didn't, I didn't really catch that much. <laughs> yeah, you take some time off, and yeah. uh, <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna fight for that thing anymore. Yeah. So that's what I was gonna ask. What What are your goals when it comes to that? Obviously, you've done very well online. You had a great scoop leading up to the. Uh, World Series. I had all my, I had this 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 goals I I've, I set up when I was starting, mm-hmm. and I I scratch everything online. I wanted to win a couple of coops. I wanted to win Player of the Year. I got three of them. I wanted to 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 establish myself as one of the the best players in in, in the online. I think I've done that. I want to be profitable in high stakes for for consecutive time. I've done that as well. So all the the things that I, I've won. All the events, the Max event, Party Pokers event. So all the online things I've, I'm kind of I kind of scratched. So I'm actually just just now just looking forward for the for what's left more more of as a as a live. Most of my goals now are live. Yeah, I still compete online. I still try to get. Well, some... I was about to say you did move to London mm-hmm. uh, for online, but now Portugal is about to get you know some player liquidity back with Spain. Um, and some news that just came out. Uh, yeah, so what? What's that? I'm assuming that's for tax reasons. <laughs> and, and 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 to be able to play online. Mm-hmm. I mean, even if your my goals are not online oriented right now, they aren't. They're mostly live. If you want to get better, if you want, you you need to f- to find the best competition mm-hmm. and the best games as well. It's not like I'm gonna slouch when I'm gonna play online. I'm still gonna give my best. So and 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 you need the dot com. We did dot com to to have. Play with the Swedes, play with the Germans, play with the, the Spanish. They're getting very good as well, mm-hmm. and to play in an attra- attractive tournament. So I, I still had to go. So that's your new anyway. goals to be a high roller, like full time high roller circuit player. I am a, a high roller for the for the last few. Years Obviously, already, yeah, yeah, for the last few years you've been doing that. But yeah, but now like I need to. to. I need. I need some. I want, want some titles. I want some. I want five bracelets. <laughs> uh, I have. Number my mind profit wise for the next five years. So now I wanna I wanna establish myself in the in the super eye roller and eye roller scene with with a few more results. Now I can I can play them more frequently than I could in the past. Uh, and now I wanna I wanna conquer that that last that last step. Yeah. Was there uh, any growing pains going from online to live for you? 
because well, I'm assuming when you play online, you are multi-tabling pretty mm-hmm. hard. What's your setup like? Yeah, uh, ten to twelve tables these days. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but people say that a lot. That question comes out a lot. The difference between online and live. You didn't have any issues. Not really, because if that's because it's mindset. My mindset is to try my best all the time. So as soon as you get to live, okay, what's the, what's the different skill set you need? Okay, maybe you need extra focus. Maybe you need to look at these live tells. Maybe you need some... So I try to develop those things. It's really hard to develop those things. And if, you, if you're if you a really good poker player, you're going to be a really good poker player anywhere. Mm-hmm. If you're just a really good poker player live, maybe not that really good of a poker player because you miss online, you miss the technical stuff. Yeah. Uh, if you're just really good at technical stuff, maybe not that really good of a poker player because you miss the live element, the... the 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 mood of the people the 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 how frustrated he is how that is going to impact his game the mm-hmm. the the body language the life tells the yeah. the timings so if you just want to become really good you have to develop a skill set that's actually good in in any game in any any format and actually I'm into mixed games as well so there's another skill set there so I never really had that that much trouble with the life uh, transition because I just I just tried hard mm-hmm. but of course it's a different skill set. It's uh, you use the technical that you come from online, but that you have different elements that can help you make really, really precise decisions. If you get really good, like especially with amateurs, you can get really precise what they actually have, and yeah, it's just challenging for me. I just it's like solving a puzzle. I love solving well, puzzles. You mentioned live tells. Uh, I wanted to bring up a hand that you played uh, on your way to winning the bracelet this summer against Ankush uh, Mandavia. Uh, where you basically had to rely on a live tell, I'm assuming, right? Mm-hmm. To to make a call in a very polarized spot. Um, for those who didn't see the hand, you had kings on an ace-high board, and he basically put you to the test mm-hmm. in a crucial spot on the final table bubble. bubble so Yeah, yeah last eight. Yeah, yeah. Much, yeah, with eight people left. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, like, uh, you know, t- tell me about that hand and what, what were you thinking about? First, it's, uh, it's a call, a very... Uh, uh, it's a it's a testament to Ankush ability to call there. He can't mm-hmm. really call that with many people. It has to be a, a right, really right. good player. It has to be a, a player that's capable of that float on a seven seven. No matter position, three bet pot, capable of firing, no pair, no equity. So it's a testament how of, of what I think that Ankush can do. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's spicy, you know. He's he's, he's smart and, and right. He had like ten nine suit and he floated the flop a seven seven three bet pots. And, yeah. And then queen, after you three bet pre, yeah. And then queen, he fired four, he, he fired, and I check all turn in river. I see bet flop and check all turn in river. Uh, it, it was it was based on 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 how I think Ankush thinks. Uh, I think we think alike in some spots. I would see that float if I was in his shoes. If I had get, so I think you would see it as well. So I think you would think about it floating as well, mm-hmm. as at least. I, I, that that's what it came through my mind. So I knew that the the floats were a possibility, uh, and and then yeah, I saw some things. Yeah, uh, I, I, had, I had tanked versus him these two or three times, uh, and so I, I was I was watching. I was looking at his face for a long time, and I think I I I, uh, I don't know. I just didn't feel right it felt yeah. felt like the, the float was there felt like i had great odds as well he didn't it was not it couldn't have that many good hands and i just i just felt that uh, especially so, on the so it was turn, a gut thing more, more than anything right? it, was, it was a tell yeah oh you do have a tell yeah. you just don't want to say it <laughs> i think i have a tell I'm, if i don't i just made a mistake at the right time it, it's possible you know <laughs> it yeah. also helps that barry hutter was in the situation <laughs> uh, complaining to the floor um yeah, so obviously... Rightfully so, let's yeah. be honest. I was, I, was in, I was in long tanks, and that was just a little too much. Well, it turns out you did have a decision, so... Yeah, it was a huge pot. It was for yeah. the final table, cheap lead, so mm-hmm. it, was, it, was, it was quite big. So and the floor actually was was quite reasonable. Like, I understand that it's taking some time, but this is an 8 million pot, whatever it was, which mm-hmm. is a third of the chips in play, 8-handed. So he actually... It was nice. He allowed me to, to think a little extra. And then Olivier called time to release my <laughs> <laughs> this torture but I, I, I called in two or three seconds I was about to make my decision anyway but they were they were reasonable it was nice it was nice well now you have a bracelet uh, what are you gonna do with it is it gonna go in a frame or are you gonna yeah, put yeah. it in a box in the bank yeah, or? Have, a, have a little a little a little trophy case yeah yeah a little uh, trophy what is it called? 
I always ask poker players, and they're like, I don't know, it's in a drawer. Or, no, no, I no, gave no. it to my sister, and I'm always like, well, this guy's a basketball player. He's got trophies. Yeah. He's got places to put this. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, so I have, I have a couple of all my poker trophies are. You're not going to wear it up during the tournament, though, right? No. no, no <laughs> not really, no. Have you been wearing it? No? no? Oh, man. We took a picture with the engagement ring, though. There yeah, you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The two jewelry is not nah. side by side. No, nah, I just no, no. I need to to go home and then <laughs> first I need to to the only person that I think is gonna wear it for the for the coming future is my mom. I want to burn my mom. I think it's gonna be nice. Mm-hmm. Taking a nice picture. It's something that I always wanted to do. Whenever I win my my first bracelet, to so just take a picture with my mom in it, mm-hmm. just to thank her all all she done. My dad as well, but I don't think my dad is gonna enjoy bracelets. So I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna live with my mom and my sister. Uh, and then just, just. I always thought it'd be cool if it was a watch, like a. Could be, you know, like a. Because these, because the, the 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 new ones you can't really use them because mm-hmm. they are like yeah. they're kind of rigid. Yeah, 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 yeah. The old ones, uh, uh, they're more like championship belts for your wrist. A little bit, a little bit, <laughs> like uh, wrestling belts. All right, we have some rapid fire questions to close it out. If you're ready, let's go. Biggest pot you've ever won or lost? I don't play cash, so yeah. The what about biggest... equity wise? It was probably this call with the Kush. Yeah. That's yeah, probably a 300k pot. As far as real equity in the tournament? Yeah. Well, yeah. the heads up flip, but whatever. Not flip, ace king to ace queen of Joe jo- Kada, but that, not really. It's just a flip flop situation. That's the it's cooler. Pre-flop situation. <laughs> yeah, just a huge cooler. But the, yeah, the pl- pot with the Kush with an equity, I would say 300k, mm-hmm. maybe more. Yeah. That was a big call. That's, yeah. the, that's the one. Uh, what's about What about the best swap or piece you've ever had of anybody? <laughs> Super <Dario>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Super Dario. That right is now. the first time I noticed you're wearing a uh, Dario uh, San Martino shirt. Yeah. That is hilarious. I just assumed that was a Super Mario t shirt. That's a Super Dario. You have Dario's face Photoshop on Mario's body. That's that's great. With the Super Dario. Sign. So it was Phil who you made this shirt. We're in the same fantasy team. He made are you, the uh, shoes. Are you gonna go sweat the the main event of after? Course. Of course. <laughs> the, I would have anyways because we're really close. Mm-hmm. Uh, great guy. Well, who are you close with? Uh, are you close? Uh, uh, who are you close with on the, the high roller circuit and stuff like that? Or who are your guys? Italians. Mustafa, one of my mm-hmm. best friends. Dario, you know, mm-hmm. became one of my best friends. Gianluca Speranza as well. Uh, I wasn't sure if the language thing, like you're closer to the Spaniards or the, yeah. the Brazilians. <laughs> Brazilians, most of the Brazilians I'm friends with. Mm-hmm. Akari, Yuri, Jalevsky just made a great, great score. Uh, all, all of the Brazilian communities, pretty much. The Spanish as well. I got along mm-hmm. very nicely. Sergio. Sergio and I do. And uh, Adrian, they come up, came up uh, as I, I did at the same time. Him, Mustafa as well. Mm-hmm. First big tournaments, we all started kind of together. Uh, but I have a whole bunch of friends, honestly. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, which is cool. I can I can be hanging around with different crowds at different times. Well, it makes sixty days in Vegas go by faster. Yeah, 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 it's easier, and even the the the, the eye roller circuit as well. So I think I get along with everybody, but mostly the the Mediterranean guys, mm-hmm. Spanish, Italians, and uh, Brazilians. Uh, not. Where's the weirdest place you've ever played poker for money? Um. um one of the boor- most boring guys to have. make those <laughs> questions because I, I mostly, I mostly played online and then yeah. my, f- my second life tournament was an EPT. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was it. You just uh, jumped 5K. right in, right? Yeah, yeah. Because so, I was in an island, so I was practicing online and then as soon as I got to live circuit, I just went to the, the EPT. I was already a high yeah. stakes player. So, uh, really boring on that. Who's but, the best player we've never heard of? You could shout out a friend or... That's a... I think I would won that title a few years ago. Uh, <laughs> no, you're, you're not anymore. It's not exactly never heard of, but it's kind of a uh, it's a bit of of a, uh, a mystery. It's kind of hidden. It's uh, it's life name I can't really tell because it's German and the Germans are petrified of of <laughs> taxes. Uh, but sick one. Okay. Is the online? Oh, sick uh, one! Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's really you heard about his nickname, yeah, yeah. but he's live because he not a lot of people know who he is, and I'm close with some of the Germans as well, and he's extremely good. He's the the one of the best players that 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 stay away from mainstream. Yeah. Which is hard. He's not. Yeah. His live name is probably known as well, but you can just you can connect both. Yeah. He's, he's really good. He's really good. I would say well, it would be rare. in my top ten. It would be in my top ten. All players, and for sure, uh, a lot of people was gonna miss it. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of uh, killers out there. They're just secret killers. There's a lot of people. The only, just a lot of kids from the online who are really good, and they just, you know, for some reason, they never made it to the high roller circuit, or whatnot, uh, and they're 
far better than than so many names that might have 10 million in caches and yeah. they have like 500k or 1 million it's, <laughs> it's frequent there i don't know if this question applies to you but what was the worst job you had before poker uh did you ever do a job I, besides basketball yeah. <laughs> well yeah i did a uh, summer camps okay and you had to I, wrangle the kids huh i love kids I love kids <laughs> and i love the person that i work with I'm still very friends uh, with her. They actually, they basketball connected. They used to be my coach, but not. That was hard. Because yeah. <laughs> I have too much energy. They, they just run and run. Says and, the and guy they, who would do two practices a day after going uh, to college. Uh, three. <laughs> that's <it's> Fridays. <laughs> Fridays, I would go for the third. But that's why I look 45 and I'm 29. <laughs> that's the main reason. But that was that was not uh, funny. It's, especially in the summer. All your mates are on the beach and mm. hanging around. And I'm just... Uh, Kids yeah. from eight to six, and they don't stop. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. They just don't stop. Yep. They have energy for wow. It's insane. Yep. Yeah. I have a five and a half year old. I know exactly it's, what. I have a five yeah. and a half. They just how? Just not how is stop. that even possible? No, you can't even go to the grocery store without laps around the aisle. You know, so <laughs> I can't even imagine a summer camp where they're given sports equipment. And are encouraged to run. Actually, out. the sports is actually nice because they <laughs> drain some of the energy and they just chill a little bit. But yeah, whenever you get to over there. sit them in a the room and make them do like whatever, like a board game, that's that's the worst because yeah. they just their attention span is it's half a <laughs> second. Uh, that was hard. That was hard. And then you, I'm overly cautious about their safety and whatnot, so we have to be like. Ugh. Make sure none of them get out. Yeah, don't die. You know, just stay alive <laughs> yeah. until your mom gets here. Exactly. Yeah, it was, it then, was, then you're their problem. Yeah. Uh, this might not apply to you either. What was your largest non-poker wager? Do you gamble on anything other than cards? No, I don't. Uh, no, it's, it's no not. sports betting. No pit games. No prop bets. No, not really. I'm just bored. I, I play. I no we, free throw shooting competitions with. Uh, we've done some of those. <laughs> I want to, but that's. But, so, very insignificant money. I, I I do some UFC when I watch UFC, but twenty bucks. Yeah, a fight, a fifty bucks a fight maximum. Yeah. I went to a uh, live event at Turks and Caicos uh, back in the day where all the poker players were gambling on a three point shooting contest. Yeah, and like it was a lot of money, and uh, there was a lot of good players out there that were pretty good. But the best I think was Isaac Barron. Okay, who also won a bracelet this summer. Hey, and this the 2019 class is a nice one. Right, there's, there was a really cool, a lot of well, a lot of great first time bracelet winners. Yeah. Obviously, you mentioned Chidwick, <laughs> Chidwick. Chidwick is top of the chain, yeah. and then there were a lot of people who won their third bracelet too. Just a Sean, yeah. So, uh, um, Epi, Joan Epi as well, they wanted the same. It was a great, it was a great month, Nick Shulman, yeah. Uh, repeat, I think, mm -hmm. uh, Zeno, repeat mm -hmm. as well. It was, a, it was a really cool year, a yeah. really cool year, which is odd. But to talking about bets. I heard about the uh, we call it ping pong table tennis mm -hmm. game uh, in the Bahamas, I believe. Five k a point. I don't think <laughs> two really drunk guys, two really drunk Italians who, five, who aren't good at ping pong. <laughs> I have no idea. I was not there. Five k a point. Five k a point. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, well, that's one of my favorite things about poker players is you hear these stories about like golf bets, and these are bets done by terrible golfers. For more money than any professional golfer would ever bet. Yeah. And yeah, it's just like, it's oh, a little tough to chart. It's like, don't you have enough adrenaline in your life? You know? <laughs> don't your money swing enough on your job to have to go bet golf? But yeah, I don't. I don't well, that's good. It. You don't crave any of that. I, no. no that's I'm good. just boring. I just, I don't want. That's a good look for your future, I think. Yeah. yeah What's I, a talent you don't have that you wish you did? Uh, hmm. Wish I could sing. You wish you could sing. Yeah. Is he a bad singer? Yeah. But he <laughs> tries, right, in the car? Yeah, not really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you listen to? We, we asked this about uh, yeah. people. I listen a lot. Do stuff. your headphones out of the table, yes or no? Yeah. And when you do listen to them, what are you listening to? I, I used to listen to all kinds of stuff. But now these days I just listen to very relaxing music that helps me actually focus. So it's another boring answer. But I used to listen to a lot of... What do you mean, like classical or... No, just the... Just, just, uh, kind of yoga kind of music mm -hmm. brain enhancement stuff uh but i used to 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 be a bit more fun uh, i i still put some so i have my trigger music when i want to get fired up mm -hmm. kendrick lamar k dot always goes it gets in there j cole always gets so in there. so you got a playlist i do i do yeah. mostly hip-hop mm -hmm. it's what i need to fire up that's 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 the thing so but the I, music will affect you 
Oh yeah, a play. lot, <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot. I it's was, like they say when you play fast music, you drive faster. I would probably. Yeah. I used to when I was a kid. I used to live with my headphones. I still do. Mm-hmm. So it's it's something that it's, it's really in me. It's uh, music. It's something that I find fabulous and and, and intriguing. Favorite movie? Uh, Shawshank Redemption. Okay. Wow. It's a great yeah. movie. It's an amazing movie. <laughs> what do you like about it? You, I mean, I'm sure, like, like everyone. Many of them. Actually, I could, here in the states, it's, it's on between every them day. and Hotel Rwanda as well. Hotel Rwanda. Oh, Hotel Rwanda. Have you met um, uh, Don Cheadle? No, because <laughs> he, he's around. He is. Yeah, he plays poker all the time. I didn't know. No. Yeah, Don Cheadle, the star of Hotel Rwanda, uh, plays a lot of Hollywood home games with oh, like uh, I didn't know. Antonio and uh, oh, Phil Locke, probably that, 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 that crew, kind of crew. that crew. Yeah, and he plays some charity events. I think he was here for the uh, the One Drop event a few years ago. It's just an insane movie. <laughs> yeah, it's a great, great movie. Mm-hmm. I'm just watching. Well, it's not. I actually not... met him and told him that. And I felt like a real idiot. Real idiot. It's because <laughs> okay. So this is a. Fun... We were in the back hallways here at the Rio, and this was, oh six or oh seven. When all the celebrities were out here okay. uh, for the charity event, like Matt Damon was out here, oh, wow. Ben Affleck was out here, and they even uh, played the main, right? One of them. Yeah, they played the main. It was that situation where Matt Damon looked real bad, pretend, pretending like. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's some bad acting. Yeah, he was doing some real bad, really acting bad acting at the table. Uh, better as better actor on the screen than at the poker <laughs> table. For that, sure. that was really bad. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I happened to run into in the back hallway Adam Sandler. Wow. Um, and he was just sitting there and um, talking to somebody who had his back to me. And I walked up and I just kind of bumped. I was like, holy shit, Adam Sandler. Oh, my God, I love you so much. And I just started rattling off Waterboy, Happy Gilmore, you know, all of my favorite movies. And then I, at that moment, look and turn and realize who he's talking to. And it's Don Cheadle. Wow. And my brain could only say, oh, I loved Hotel Rwanda. <laughs> <laughs> This was before, you know, he was an Avenger. It was, you can't really compare both. Yeah. The Avenger is nice, but... You know, right, it's, but it's, it's, it's one of the... Because it's a dark movie. You know, it's a sad movie. Sad and movie. it's just a weird thing to say to somebody. It's not a sad movie. This it's guy a has... true story, too. Yeah, this guy's That's got a... fucking... Uh, a lot of credits. One point <laughs> something million people got, got, mm-hmm. got ripped off in the face of her. That was... Uh, exactly. Something like that. It was a weird, weird, really high number. It was crazy. Exactly. It just seemed like a really weird thing to shout yeah, out to yeah, him. Yeah, and yeah, he yeah. was just like, oh, thanks. I think it was when they were doing the movie Rain Over Me, but... Like the like saying I like uh, I love the, pi- the pianist the, the, the pianist yeah 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 it's sad you know <laughs> it's not yeah. something to love you know? yeah I'd be like that's my favorite movie I watch it every no, day no that'd know? be weird no I just watch it <laughs> once or twice and you kind of at least at least with Schindler's List you have I'm uh, not Schindler's List uh, I'm about to say another example of a movie you should not love um, at least with Shawshank Redemption you have the moment of yeah. redemption at the end you know yeah. the, the good moment it's great to end on great can't beat that beach scene it's amazing uh all right we end the podcast the same way every time with a question from the random question generator okay. are you ready oh you have that i'm sorry i uh, actually that's an app right no no no. this is listed i did this earlier oh, okay. because i don't have internet in here uh yours is what do you think of buffets uh this is an like a pretty american concept i'm you know yeah. there's every casino in vegas has a buffet you pay 40 50 bucks and you stuff your f- face until you hurt that's 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 the face probably will will decrease uh american lifespan for a year or two <laughs> <laughs> that's what i think about it i actually like them i, I don't go I there say, very like, what often. do portuguese think of us american eaters you know i mean wow. you guys uh Europe. at least um well i guess that's you know you guys don't do like uh we have a tr- we have, we have a problem yeah we have a problem like that's one of the things when you think america like yeah, you need to be, be you need to care be careful with that. At least you, but you guys got all the, the best dried meats in the world. Yeah, but we we the thing is that's how I would get fat living in Portugal. You, you can't just, get easily would, get fat. Living I would in just Portugal, be the but, cured meat guy. Just keep just keep feeding it to me. But the 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 the, the, the our perception and 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 like we have fast food everywhere. We mm-hmm. eat fast food, but the amount of fast food that you eat in this country is wow, <laughs> just a little too much. And not just because of the the, the, kind the of problems of, the, of nutrition, <laughs> but it's 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 a health issue. Yeah, it's a health issue that we as Europeans actually talk about, like between players, like wow, this is dangerous. Not in a way like oh, these people get fat. Mm-hmm. Not because not aesthetics. Yeah. Like careful, you know. 
No, it's heart disease. <laughs> no, it's heart disease. It's diabetes. It's whatever it yeah. is. It's a little too much. That's something that's uh, part of it. Of course, it's a well-known problem in America, actually. It's mm-hmm. a health issue. I think they're trying to fight it at schools and whatnot. I think the the awareness trying. is... Trying. It's true, right? They're, yeah. they're trying. But I've heard when uh, this happens, it was a very popular story. When it said, oh, the American schools will stop serving... Uh, hamburgers and fries and pizzas and we were like they were serving before yeah like what do you mean they were serving before my my, my school was forbidden to sell cakes <laughs> because it was just too much sugar I was like wow I, like, there wasn't a soda machine you could go to this, uh, i had in the first few years uh, my 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 fiance is a bit younger than me on her years it was already forbidden but that's probably a little too much huh? you know but mm-hmm. serving as hamburgers or pizza to the kids it was Wild, unheard of. Unheard, no, no way. It's, <laughs> un- it's still there's no way they're gonna serve that. So that's that's something that uh, that uh, Europeans are like. Well, it's something that, it's a great country. But well, there you have it, America. Eat a salad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the I think the the the, the problem might have be. It's 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 the the number of publicity you see on TV and the in Americans are amazing at marketing. Mm-hmm. This is an amazing marketing country. Absolutely yeah. amazing. Yeah. It's like, wow, I want to eat that too. I'm vegetarian. I want to eat that meat. Mm-hmm. So the, the marketing is amazing. Americans yeah. are great at that. They're amazing. But that comes with, with the cost because the, the fast food industry is huge and it's just bombarding people every day. And it's the cheapest food too. It's the cheapest food. It's That's cheapest what people food. don't realize. Like, especially for low income people, it's the cheapest you know what i mean like you can't really yeah. blame them if it's cheaper to go to mcdonald's than the grocery or fried store chicken or whatever it is yeah yeah it's the cheapest one that's the, and that's also one of the 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 the, the problems because yeah you you get bombarded with it's good sounds like the solution is to make fast food more expensive right well that's not gonna happen <laughs> it's fast food but, but just, just diver, diversify on the, the the there's so many backgrounds in the u.s so many different kinds of cuisine you can have, so many mm-hmm. different cultures they can actually put into a mix and make great food. Uh, and that's probably the way to go. Yeah. yeah. And probably just, just this huge effort from the government. Well, we, to, can't, to, we can't rely on any on anything there. Oh, to some <laughs> Unfortunately. Extent. To some extent, some good things and bad things. Thank you so much. I have to get you back to your tournament where you're going to yeah. run up that short stack and yeah. win bracelet number two. Let's hope so. Uh Good luck out there. Thank, Thank you for, for having me on the podcast. Yeah. Thank you, Car Player, for, for having me. And, yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's get the uh, bracelet number three for Winamax. There you it's go. Our, it's our, we got two already. And, uh, that's right. Let's that's finish right. With, a, with a great summer. That's it. That's the show. Thank you once again to Joao for coming on the podcast and sharing his stories. You can find him on both Twitter and Instagram at Nasa114Official. That's N-A-Z-A-114 underscore O-F-I-C-I-A-L. Additionally, you can also find him playing online as a team pro for Winamax, which is a deal he's had since the beginning of last year. You can also find us on Twitter at CardPlayerMedia and also at Poker underscore Stories. Don't forget to subscribe and get a new Poker Stories podcast every two weeks. If you give us a nice rating and a review, let us know about it with an email to pokerstories at cardplayer.com and we'll hook you up with a free digital subscription to Card Player Magazine. Thanks for listening.